wish I was doing some sort of pre-show thing that shows how I kind of get to being ready to be on stage, but uh, I feel kind of like an asshole if I do something like that, because it's really just my job, you know, so I shouldn't really have to work up to it. It's kind of like a plumber going, all right, this place got pipes, okay, I'm ready. I got a wrench, where's my wrench, my wrench. Okay, let's do the wrench action before we go and fix the pipes. It's dumb, so I'm just gonna go do my show and hope that's enough. But there's something you have to do before every show, and now uh, you can't see it. when you come out to like big driving music, man. It's just, I, I, uh, I apologize for the big egomaniacal entrance, uh, but, but I have one of the few jobs where you can actually do that, so I'm going to do it, by God. I, you know, I get, you know, I get to pick my theme music, you know, in my life. That's, you know how awesome that is? That's brilliant, because you don't get to. Most of us don't in our own life, you know what I mean? Other people pick your theme music for you when you walk into a room, you know? And you hope it's good, you know? You hope when you walk into a room, they go, wow, she's hot. You know? And not, you know, it's a circus in town. You know what I mean? Or, you know, I get that. I used, I'm from Kentucky and that's what I used to get. You know what, if I, if I could pick one song for my whole life that would be my theme song. It would be that song, I don't even know the name of it. It's in all those period horseback riding movies where there's a guy riding, you know, in a kilt or something on the back of a horse, just into battle going, You know that song? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that is, I think, seriously, that is the single greatest song in the history of the world. It just gives you, there's so much power in it, you know? That's the song you want playing in your iPod the day you decide to go postal, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> fuck this job. Does Dave still work here? He me hold on, want me who, you know? You know what I mean? It's like, ooh, it's so invigorating. <laughs> The only other time you see that song is in a, in a movie where there's a priest being torn apart by Rottweilers in a park. You know, it, the, the weird thing is, have you ever seen more than one Rottweiler in your whole fucking life? No. And suddenly there's six of them running through the park, no leash, no owner, just You know, just haunches, rippling muscle, just saliva flying. You know? And he, and he never sees it coming. No one believes me that that child is the devil. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is. It's like the, it is the single great. I don't even know what the fuck it's about. It's amazing though, you know. And there's like sixteen thousand people singing it. I'm convinced that a lot of them didn't know the words either, any more than I do. You know what I mean? They're just singing to keep from the, you know, the church from killing them or whatever. Just, me, who, me. I don't know what the words just, me, me, who. keep singing, they'll kill us. Who, me, who, who. Why is that not available at karaoke? What the fuck? Next up, we have Hal singing, what the fuck is that? I don't know. Me, me, who, me. Get up here, Dave, this is a group number. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> the single greatest song in the history of the world <laughs> plays in my head every time I shop. I, you know, 
The reason I decided I wanted theme music and why I needed like big, like vigorous theme music was because I went to a baseball game and all the players are now coming out to big heavy metal stings. You know what I'm talking about? They all have their own little theme song that goes with it. It's retarded. You, you play baseball. You can't come out to heavy metal music. You wear knickers for Pete's sake. You, you know what I mean? Like you wear knee socks and spit and you have a cap and you bunt. You can't. But with metal, that's not right. You can't come out to Excelade and tonight. It's really stupid. That's like a golfer coming out to Get up, come on, get down with the sickness. You mother, get up, come on, get down with the sickness. You monkey, get up, come on, get down with the sickness. Open up your face and then you come coming to me. Wow, burning on par, bitches. Par. It's like, it's ridiculous. Baseball players should come out to sunshine on my shoulders. <laughs> I, this is, I, I, dude, I hate baseball. I hate it. I went to a game. Thank you. I, finally, some people who get it. Here's the thing. It's so dull and... They, the only way they keep you awake is the announcers who call the games just jabber on and on about like every detail about every player. Every just like they, how do they know these people? Any team, any point, just Tompkins steps up to the plate, batting 234 for the season. 27-year-old Sagittarius from Orlando, Florida, lost his virginity in a Honda Civic. Wild and outside, ball one. Hot day at Wrigley Field. Pitcher winds up. His son's in rehab. Pop fly to center field. Right fielder Ball City, the gay son of Italian immigrants, settles under that pitch as Tompkins rounds second, carrying the guilt of his father's murder. Ball City drops the ball, fielded by Ortega, who only has one testicle. Tompkins slides, he's safe. And the Cubs are behind 300 to one. <laughs> Thank you. What? It's so boring. I'd love to go to a party, though, where I didn't know anybody with one of these guys, because they'd be infinitely helpful. Like, wow, she's hot. Who's she? Lisa Madsville! 27-year-old legal secretary from Fullerton, California, loves hiking and sleeping with two guys at once. Wild and outside, ball two. Uh, that's my favorite pun in the world. Um, <laughs> I don't like sports in general, man. I come, I'm from Kentucky, and uh, all my relatives are into NASCAR. So, yeah, seriously, fuck you. You're watching people drive. That's not sports. That's virtual traffic. I get enough shit like that on the freeway. I don't need to sit home and watch it, too. This is uh, uh, NASCAR. The mark of a bad sport is that it's actually worse to see live. That's how you know a sport is bad. You know what I mean? Like, it should be more exciting, right? You go, even if you don't care about it, you go to a basketball game, it's kind of interesting. You go to NASCAR, this is, what it is, is exactly what it's like to go see NASCAR live. <laughs> we paid $85 for these fucking seats. I missed it again. I missed it again. Fuck. Oh, here comes a pack. I didn't even see color in that. What the hell? Mom, who are we rooting for again? Tide. What? T tide? What are you talking about? Why Tide? I like Tide. It smells nice. April Fresh. Sure, nothing says racing like April Fresh, Mom. Yeah, great. This is how stupid NASCAR is. They have a Coors car. What? Alcohol-sponsored driving? You're shitting me, right? You're fucking kidding me. Al you can always spot the Coors car because it's a station wagon. It always has trouble in the straightaways. <laughs> Y'all kids, shut up back there. I'm not even close to kid. Mm. Car. 
car? What do you, why don't you just have a pot car while you're at it? Why don't you just you do that? If you're, it's just a guy going five miles an hour, never gets out of idle, and he's always looking in the rearview mirror. Oh, shit, man. Cops are behind me. It's not, it's not the cops, it's a pace car. You said that. Oh, it's in my helmet, totally. Okay, gotcha. Thanks, man. <laughs> pot car would be like the easiest pit stop in the world, because it never has to stop. It just roll by at four miles an hour, you know, with the window down, they just throw in a bag of Cheetos. Never runs out of gas. See you later. Sweet home Alabama. <laughs> really, you're gonna let alcohol sponsor driving though. Honestly, well, why don't you just have a Dairy Queen marathon while you're at it? Just a bunch of guys. <laughs> Tonight's dance-a-thon sponsored by Ambien. <laughs> Watches poker on television. You're watching people play cards. You can get a deck and do it yourself, you know? You might even make a friend. It's not like you're gonna pull something. They have poker on ESPN. ES what the fuck is on ESPN 2 now? Fucking two kids in the back of a station wagon playing war on the way to grandma's house. Just Carol Ann has a nine, Jackie has a six. Carol Ann wins. Ooh, that Jack trumps that too. Uh-oh, somebody spilled a fruit cup. Like, it's cards. I guess it's because, you know, like everybody's confused. Like sports doesn't mean anything anymore. None of the players, the pro players are from anywhere. There's no sense of like us and them and go team because like all these people are just, you know, these millionaire sports agents just going all over the world looking for the biggest pituitary case they can find to just kind of, you know, go to this like smoke covered island and drag him back in chains, a big unibrow, and make him play basketball, you know, for the, from the mountains of Croatia, you know. And like, where's the sport in that? It's ridiculous. The nets are this high to these fucking guys. Like, watching a baby put his diaper in the trash for the first time. Like, I hate sports. We don't even have a pro team of any kind in Kentucky. I, you know, when I tell people I'm from Kentucky, I usually get the same response. Every time it comes up, they always go, uh, nuh -uh. Like, why the fuck would I make that up? Who, who coasts on coming from Kentucky? You know what I mean? Like, and I go, like, why? Why don't you believe I'm from Kentucky? They go, well, you don't have an accent. Like, I lost my accent. Actually, that's not true. I didn't lose my accent. I, I, I took it into an alley and I shot it in the fucking head. I was like, <laughs> you're not gonna stop me from getting laid ever again, you stupid accent is the worst. Seriously, cause like a southern, southern accent on a dude is the worst thing when you're trying to pick up a woman. It's like on a woman, it's nice. Like a woman with a southern accent is kind of charming and sweet. It's got a nice lilt to it. Like, well, my goodness, those are some awfully tight wranglers you have on there, oh. Mm, you just sing like a bird in church. Mm, that's lovely. Would you like to come in and have some pie? Mm. Woman's kind of sexy. A dude with a southern accent, you sound like you like hitchhike down from the Appalachian Mountains because you, you're all so interbred that you need new blood, so you have to abduct some woman from a truck stop, and you're like, come with us. Well, hey, we need new blood. My kids have flippers. My, my family tree looks like the Olympic rings. It's just a bunch of concentric circles. Y'all have to, my feet are fused together. I swear to God. Come with us. It's, it is the worst act. And you know what? The main reason I had to lose is because they've automated 411 now, and you can't get a fucking number unless you speak so clearly. You know what I mean? You have to speak like a radio announcer to get a number. And you can't be like, for what city and state? I want that baker place down there in Skeeterville. For what city and state? I want that baker place down there in Skeeterville. For what city and state? I want that baker place down there, so fuck it. I'm walking, I know where it is, God damn it. I was there before, shit. <laughs> you, have to, you have to speak so clearly. Don't you feel like a loser when you actually have to talk to an operator? Like for what city and state? Please hold for an operator. Fuck, I'm a retard, this is terrible. 
And I'm, I'm not really worried about 411 because I can operate a phone book, but if they did 411, you know they're gonna do 911. You have to be articulate in a high tension situation, you know? Please state your emergency. <laughs> Please state your emergency. He's in the house! Please state your emergency. He's stabbing me with a fork! Please state your emergency. I love him! He's a good man! Don't take him from me and the kids. I love him. I am on the phone. Y'all go, I am on the phone. Stop, now settle. Go have your mac and cheese, I swear to God. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Oh, yeah, there you go. They, they, they probably couldn't do it like, they'd have to do it like movie phone, you know? For robbery, press one. For car theft, press two. For murder, press three. You chew through duct tape bonds, crawl through a thicket and are lying naked and bleeding in the parking lot of a Kenny Rogers Roasters. Press four, enter now. <laughs> Thank you for calling funeral phone. Um. <laughs> I moved out of Kentucky. Uh, because uh, we live in a, um, we lived in a tornado lane. <laughs> Let me explain something to you, you guys might be familiar with. Um, we're in San Francisco, earthquakes happen here, but not on a regular basis. You can be forgiven for not get, you know, for getting comfortable. It could be 10 years, it could be 20, it could be every three weeks, you don't know, so you're forgiven. It's like the tsunami. When the tsunami happened, I felt immediately sympathetic for those people because a 600 foot fucking wave? Like, shit like that does not happen. Nothing like that has happened in hundreds of years. That's the kind of thing of like cave pictograms and oral traditions. You know, your grandpa going, when the great mountain god became angry with us, the jaws of the ocean god rose up and bit the island. Whatever, grandpa, bullshit. And then, holy shit, I told you, you little fucker. <laughs> Get your own ride, you bastard. You don't know, mess with me. But nobody saw that coming. They, they, they were totally forgiven for being hit by that. But a tornado lane, that means the tornado came through the same neighborhood every year. <laughs> move! Get the fuck out of there! A tornado lane, you can literally move eight miles in either direction and it won't hit. You realize what that is? That's God's way of saying, look, you can live anywhere you want, okay? Just not here. <laughs> this is all mine. You can live up here. Down here is fine. All this is me. <laughs> what did I tell you guys? Jesus. <laughs> Because every time it happens, they always say the same thing. We're gonna rebuild! <laughs> what? Don't you mean re-park? Because, well, it's a, they didn't build it. It came on a flatbed. They took the wheels off. That's not construction, that's Ikea. You know, I don't gamble because I live in an earthquake zone. Like, that's rolling the dice. I like this house. I've chosen, it's like rolling the dice every morning. 4 a.m. or am I gonna be, where's the door frame? <laughs> I think, you know, like there's all these like casinos and I play them occasionally and people like, I don't understand gambling at all because I think it's like hedging your bet, you know? Because we all gamble all the time. That's enough. That's your, you're pressing your luck every day. Every time you get on the freeway, behind some asshole with shit tied to the top of his car, you're gambling with your life. You know what I mean? Because have you ever been like, there's a guy, just enormous pile of crap on his car, and the heavier it is, the lighter it's tied down. Like some guy could have like, oh, I just got like a couple pieces of cardboard. I'm gonna use some like barge rope and some chains and a staple gun and hold it down, you know. But a bedroom set with a wobbly mirror and a big fucking box spring or something, I just some dental floss, that should hold that. That should be like some ribbon from grandma's present last year, we had that in the utility drawer in the kitchen, that should be fine. Oh, you know what, I'll just lick the top of the Volkswagen and just push everything down. Because there's, there's always, when you're behind them, there's always one piece of it going. Fuck, click. Get away from me, dude, why are you? Don't you 
always picture that if it does come off, you'll be able to dodge it like you're in the Matrix or something. You know, like then it'll happen in slow motion and you'll just go like, oh my God. Yeah, don't you think that's what's gonna happen? Doesn't work out the way. That's not the way it happens at all, ever. It happens like this, honey, honey, honey. <laughs> ah! Oh! Ah! 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 <laughs> Me? <laughs> While we're on the subject, uh... <laughs> I may be confessing too much, but am I the only driver here who is afraid of a plastic bag? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm in, I'm in three tons of steel and plastic and glass and gasoline, and a fucking grocery bag is scaring the shit out of me. Oh my God. <laughs> It's like the ghost of traffic accidents past. It's, why do you torment me? And it always just like magnetizes your car. You're like changing lanes. You're like, fuck. <laughs> it goes under somebody else's car and it comes out immediately. It goes, goes under your car. What the fuck is it? Do you smell burning? I smell burning. I smell burning plastic. I know how a car blows up. I've seen the A-Team. I know what goes on. We're dead. We're gonna die. Just get ready to jump out the, I'll slow down to 35. Just leap to your, you know, and then it goes and flies out. And you're like, oh, thank God. It feels like forever that it's under your car and everybody else like that. And you can tell because there's, that it was only a second because three cars behind you, there's some dude going, fuck, why is it following me? <laughs> you ever pass a bag in the street and it's full of something? You know what I mean? Like a full cloth bag, maybe a car, and you're like, dead body. That's a dead body. I just know it's, it's got definitely parts of a dead body. Like, I have to call the cops. I'm in charge now. I've got, I'm CSI. i got to control the crime scene. I'm responsible. I'm the only one aware that it's a body. No one else here knows. I've got to call before the DNA gets dry or something. I don't know how that works, but i got to, what's my code name? I call it in or whatever. And then you get like, like a block and a half away and you're like, not my problem anymore. It's not my problem. I don't, I don't even know the number for dead body call. It's not really an emergency. The guy's probably, uh, it's not even, he's probably a mobster, probably deserved it. I gotta, is this my turn off? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> I got uh, I spook easily, I'm sorry. <laughs> Which is probably why I shouldn't watch those, uh, like, like, I like CSI in those shows because they're fictional, but those like uh, cold case files and shows like that scare the crap out of me. You know, I, I, I love them. I watch them religiously because they're fascinating. And by the way, if you live in a small town that no one would ever suspect a murder would happen there, move immediately because you're going to be killed. <laughs> Just, and someone's going to tell a sappy story about you. <laughs> we never thought anything like this would happen here. I <laughs> had no idea. And I like watching them. I watch them all the time because they're riveting. But I'm concerned a little bit that they're, they're like how to be a serial killer for dummies. You know what I mean? Like, it's the perfect murder guidebook, you know? Because you know there's some dude at home wearing someone else's hair as a wig and got his dick tucked and lipstick on and fucking taking notes on a legal pad and has some person in a fucking well behind him in the basement and Nazi flags hanging everywhere, just writing down, had the body been buried five miles outside of the search zone, no evidence ever would have been found. Five miles outside of the search zone. Had the killer been wearing rubber gloves, no DNA would have been found at the scene. By rubber gloves. Buy rubber <laughs> I like informative television, man. I like learning, you know, while I'm doing it. It's not always what they intend to teach me. I learn things that they are just like hidden messages. Like I watch those uh, uh, on A&E, like Discovery Channel and those kind of shows. Like they, on the Discovery Channel, they have those uh, dinosaur shows. You know, those... Awesome! They're the little, remember when? <laughs> they have those shows 
When I was a kid, they were like claymation shows and they sucked and you could see the thumb marks of the animator in them and they had to wait seven years. Now they have a new one every week about every possible Allosaurus has his own show now. And it's awesome, but I figured out watching those shows why the Tyrannosaurus Rex was the most vicious, vile monster ever to roam the earth. It's because his arms were too short for him to masturbate. <laughs> I'm so frustrated! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you imagine how <laughs> I'm gonna bite an herbivore, I'm so <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what wiped out the dinosaurs was their arms eventually evolved long enough and they never bred again. They were like, yeah, finally! It's a theory, I have a lot of them. It's okay. <laughs> they had a show on, the, on, on Discovery about uh, contraceptives throughout history. Awesome, and the oldest known one they said was in the year 3000 BC in Egypt, women used to use crocodile dung. Ew, Ew is right. <laughs> and I'm sure it worked because seriously, it's like date night and you're like, hey, hey. <laughs> oh honey, what are you? Oh my God, no, that's good, I'll call you. That's good. Uh, see you later, that was, no, you keep it, okay. <sighs> oh. <laughs> but that's where the phrase I'm gonna fuck the shit out of you comes from. See? You always wondered, didn't you? Now you know. It's over 5,000 years old. <laughs> they said that they. They said the, the one that lasted the longest was in the year 500 in France. Women used to use lemons. They would slice a lemon in half, insert half of it inside themselves, and the shape would act as a diaphragm, and the lemon juice would act as a spermicide. It was a very effective contraceptive, and also explains why French men talk like this. I really... I love you, but goddamn. Mm, but does anyone have a watermelon Jolly Rancher or perhaps a packet of equal or something? <laughs> I can only fucking whistle anymore. Just some... <laughs> and that's why French women were called tarts. Ha ha! <laughs> I pay attention because you know why I pay attention so much? Because I'm a nitpicker. You know what I mean? Like little things bug me. Like, like American Idol, my biggest problem with that show, the name. Um, Idol? These people? Seriously? American Idol. I, this, uh, here's what I'm trying to say. All of my music idols never would have made it on that show. Not a fucking one. Not John Lennon, not fucking Bob Dylan. I like when you don't, it isn't like, you know, never. Would have fucking Brian Johnson from ACDC. Hey, 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 it! Yeah, he'll get past Simon. That would make total. Fucking Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, I'm really worried about what he's doing. I don't know what he's doing. Paula thinks of Mr. Crowley. You know, it's bullshit. Idol, seriously, these are your idols. This, seriously, this is what you're telling me? Over here you have The Doors and Kiss and King's X and, and Aerosmith and Tool. And over here you have Clay Aiken. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm a nitpicker. Like, I, you know, I don't watch the show Survivor because of the name. My rule is, if you're gonna have a show called Survivor, somebody has to die. You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> think about it for a second. Somebody has to die. You know what Survivor needs? A sniper. No, you know what I mean? None of this bullshit eighth grade voting somebody off. I don't like you, you didn't do well in the last challenge. Fuck that, no way. A red dot appears on the forehead of the person in front of you. <laughs> and you have 10 seconds to decide whether or not to tell them.
Hey, Dave, uh, yeah? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> One step closer to a million dollars. One step closer. Nitpick, it's what I do, man. Like, my, I, I complain for a living, if you haven't noticed. And uh, my biggest complaint right now, nobody knows how to fucking complain anymore, man. Nobody, you gotta be laser focused in your complaints. You can't, this malaise bullshit. Thank God it's Friday, I hate my job. That doesn't work. I need specifics so we can fix it, you fucker. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, there is an apartmentless guy who lives at the off ramp near my house. Right. Yeah, this is apartmentless. I mean, we have to set realistic goals for ourselves, folks. You know what I mean? Home is way down the line for this dude. We're not going to see him at a bed, bath, and beyond matching, you know, drapes and towels. You know, we just need to get him indoors. Let's just get him in a bachelor with a hot plate. Let's take care of the problem and, so, you know, a solution oriented name apartmentless. So every time I, you know, I get off the freeway, I give this guy change or food or whatever, and you know, and a little while ago, this guy, two cars ahead of me, leans out his window and goes, get a job! And I was like, dude, you're a fucking idiot. You really want this guy working? Think, you really want to stand in line at the DMV for four fucking hours to come face to face with a guy in a jock strap and swim fins and a raincoat going, I have a cat in my head. Here's my proof of insurance. I get alien messages on my balls. Thanks, you're glad you're working. You need to take care of them. The upside of public assistance. There are a lot of uh, phrases I hate that need to be eliminated from the English language. People need to stop saying them because they are either useless, wrong, or stupid, or all the above. Like the phrase unsweetened, I drink tea. I don't drink tea with sweetener in it, I drink tea. There's no such thing as unsweetened tea. Who the fuck bothers to put sugar in tea and then take it out again? Show me the machine that unsweetens the tea. Ma'am, what do you use, your personality? How does it work? I don't want sugar, I'm an adult. I don't mean words like non-smoker, which is dumb. I don't smoke, I've never had a cigarette in my life. I'm not a non-smoker. Nope, not a non-smoker. You know why? Because I don't label myself based on shit I don't do. You know what I mean? You're not a non-serial killer. You're not a non-habitual masturbator, no matter how much time I spend in the bathroom. It has nothing to do with you. My friend Dan says all three of these phrases, and they bug the shit out of me. The first one is, oh, that's the last thing I need. Ah, oh, man, that's the last thing I need. Like, we'll be in traffic, and there's an old guy driving slow in front of me. He's like, oh, old people drive slow. I'm going to be late for work. That's the last thing I need. And I'm like, first of all, fucko, old people should drive slow. They're old. Their eyesight sucks. Their reflexes are terrible. They had judgments formed in the 20s about other cultures and women. They don't want, you don't want somebody like that to have a lead foot. You know what I mean? Ask people at a farmer's market. You want these fuckers put putting along. You pass an old guy on the freeway going nine miles an hour, salute him. Thanks for saving lives, old timer. You're welcome. <laughs> old people should drive slow. And still he's like, oh, that's the last thing I need. I'm like, Dan, isn't the last thing you need a coffin? <laughs> Technically speaking. I guess since you're dead, you don't really need it. Probably the last thing you need is a defibrillator. You know what I mean? Those clear, poof, no, that's the last thing you need. Just, <laughs> those things are fucking perfect, by the way. They've started putting them in airports and hotels and shit. That's magnificent. Because if somebody's annoying you and wasting your fucking time standing in line, well, where's our ticket? Where's our bag? Where did we go with our gate? Just clear. anti-asshole machine. <laughs> you ever wake up and your pants are on backwards and your bag's been rifled through and you have no money and your tickets are gone and your claim checks and everything and your kidneys have been stolen? You're probably annoying me too close to one of those things. Like, oh, fuck, my kidneys are missing. It's, it's the last thing I need. Oh, shit. <laughs> this, is the 
This is a little off topic, but follow me. It's kind of related. Um, right now, I don't know if you know this, but in New York City, David Lee Roth is an EMT. I swear. Two nights a week, David Lee Roth goes out in an ambulance as an emergency medical technician, as a hobby, just cause. That's the coolest fucking thing ever. Picture this, you know, you're from Toledo and you've never been to the big city before and you're, the bright lights and the, you know, stranger Jews and queers and strangers, oh my, you know, and you're, you step off, you're just dazzled. You step off the curb expecting traffic to stop like it does in your little podunk city and it doesn't and pff, you're floating through the air. Your fanny pack bursts open and your Afro nasal spray and your visa check card go, tumbling past your soon-to-be unconscious cranium. You bounce against the wall, land flat in the street, and pass out. And you wake up five minutes later in a puddle of your own blood and sick, and you look up, and standing over you is the former lead singer of Van Halen. How you feeling, man? Whoa! Wow! Well, can't you see me standing here? I got the paddles of the deep fit machine. BP is 116. I think he's missing his plane. Ow, he should have jumped. <laughs> Somebody get him a doctor. Holy shit, that's awesome. <laughs> David Lee Roth. Thank God it wasn't Sammy Hagar. It's the last thing I need. <laughs> the phrase I probably hate next to that is uh, never say never. Never say never, because it always comes up, my friend, now when I, I don't drink. I've never had an alcoholic drink in my life. I'm not going to. It's just a choice. I have no judgments about anyone doing it, but I'm just not going to. And every time he goes, you want, you want a beer? You want a drink? I'm like, I, I don't drink. I'm never going to drink. It's cool. He's like, never say never. <laughs> never say never. And I always go, I'm never going to fuck your mom. Never say, n oh, uh, shuts those people right up. I don't drink because it's just like, I don't, I don't rebel by destroying myself. It's just kind of, that's how I feel. And that's what we've been suckered into. And the funny thing about drinking to me now is that it used to be like whiskey meant you were tough and all that stuff. And now drinks have devolved into this kind of like froofy girl drinky, like it's a Slurpee with gin in it. Oh my God. <laughs> with vodka, it's so good. I can't even taste the alcohol. Where are my pants? Where are they? You guys are fucking with me. Where, whose house is this? You guys. And they market them like that too now. Like all the, all the drinks have like, you know, cute, sexy sales names, you know, like sex on the beach and screaming orgasm. Can we have some honest alcohol names, please, just for me? Yeah, yeah, she'll have a, she'll have a screaming orgasm and I'll have an awkward hand job and a long car ride home. That'd be good, yeah. Yeah, she'll have a screaming orgasm and I'll have uh, blue balls and a text message. That'd be good. Probably good. What, what? Oh, she wants a sex on the beach and I'll have uh, crabs, actually. This is a mistake. I don't even know her. We weren't invited to this party. I just never say never. Fuck off. You know what's even more irritating? Because he actually says you never know, which has the word never in it. But whatever. You never know, and it's always like a buzzkill. Whenever you want to do something fun, you know, like he's always like, "Oh, fuck that, man! Bungee jumping? Fuck that! You never know, man! I wouldn't go that shit. Paintball? Fuck that! You never know. I would go play softball with those assholes. You never know, man! Fucking motorcycles? You never know. You know what? Sometimes you know. You know how you know? Because after you hurt yourself, you go, fuck, I knew it. <laughs> fucking knew it. You guys go ahead. I fucking knew it. I also disagree vehemently with the use of the word pussy to describe a weak person. 
because the vagina is the tougher of the two genitals. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Think about it for a second. It can pass something 800 times its size through it and retain its elasticity. You can pound on it for hours and it just goes more, more. What do you got? You got nothing. You got nothing, boy. Throw it. Whatever you got. It's like Drago and Rocky IV. It's a machine. You got nothing. It bleeds every month and it won't die. It's like the predator. What the hell are you? What the hell are you? <laughs> Get to the chopper! Pussies are invincible, that's my point. Meanwhile, my penis, if it gets nicked or grazed or there's a crease in my jeans and pinch it or it's like, oh, fuck this, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm a scared. I'm a scared. The pool is cold. Why is the pool so cold? The pool is cold. Could I possibly get smaller? The pool is so cold. I'm freezing. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, uh, my dick is a pussy. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> But it makes sense. I, you know, I, I, I'm, I spook easily. <laughs> he follows orders. I'm, I bought a house this year and I'm scared shitless of it. I literally, I live in this house. I'm afraid to go in because the realtor, when she was showing me the house, kept skimming by one of the rooms and not saying anything about it. And it leads me to believe that something awful happened there and she doesn't want to tell me about it, which I don't mean sex on the kitchen counters because you know that happens everywhere. But the, I mean like something weird. She was like, no, oh, this room, you could knock down this wall, it'd be a lovely kitchen, and then you could put a little, like, this would be a guest bedroom, be lovely, and then this, uh, over here is the kitchen. What the fuck happened over here? What is this? Why is this door nailed shut like it's in 28 Days Later, and there's, hey, there's orange light coming out of it, the dog's face that pushes through, what is that? She wouldn't say anything, so I have to ask my neighbors, you know, to see if, you know, and neighbors are scary enough, because they're, you know, neighbors are like a family you married into that you didn't meet until wedding day. You know what I mean? Like, you don't know who these fuckers are. Hi, we'll be staring in your windows for the next 12 years. Good to see you. Hello. And you have to ask them for help. You're like, hey, uh, Nick, yeah, how's it going, man? Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know if you, how long you live, but do you know of any sort of an incident that may have happened in the house before we moved? To <laughs> it's like closing his shutters like an old West film. Hey, uh, Carla, um, do you know anything that might have happened in the house before we moved in that shoo, 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 shoo. <laughs> Now I'm scared I'm gonna come home someday. There's gonna be like an old, like with groceries and there's an old man standing at the edge of my property just going. Oh. Oh. Hi. Do you live around here? Do you belong to a family? Do you remember your address? Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna have to get this ice cream in the fridge, so you be safe, okay? You'll be all right. Okay, bye-bye. So you bought the old McKittry place. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the what? No one told you about the incident. Uh, not exactly. Oh. Come back, old man. I turn around and look at my house and it's like, Someone died here. <laughs> you ever been alone in your house and you know no one else is there, but you hear a. <laughs> Someone's upstairs. This is a one story. There they are again. 
Honey, um, did I... Did the realtor say anything about sort of an incident that may have happened in here? There is no Dana, only Zool. <laughs> he just moved the headstones. I'm scared of my own house. I have a bug problem in my house. You guys don't know about that because you're in San Francisco and everything blows out to sea. You know what I love about San Francisco? It's the greatest walking city you can pretty much get. It's like kind of like a New York style thing where you can go and have new neighborhoods and you can walk around. The only thing that freaks me out is you have those time crossing lights. That freaks me out. I don't know where I'm going. I'm new here. I don't need to fucking, I'm like suddenly I'm in Mission Possible 2. You know, I'm like 10, 9, 8, we go left or right, 7, 6, just go, just go. I don't know. Is it the red wire or the blue wire? I'm like clipping them at every stop sign. But I have, I have bugs in my house. Like, I had spiders in my apartment, but I have spiders in my house that are, like, this big. They're, like, these big bird-killing fuckers. They're, like, huge. They make, like, these old clay trapdoor things and, like, have lawn furniture. They're gigantic. And they have... They, seriously. And they, they have these, like, no, ornate, beautiful, geometrically perfect webs, and they're huge, but you can't see them at night. <gasps> Whoa! Oh! Oh! It's on my back! It's a she. She's laying eggs. Whoa! Oh! I, I told my friend Dan about that, and he goes, you know they drink out of your eyes while you sleep. And I was like, ah! I don't need to know that. I would have slept through it. Now I'm a Jamba Juice for spiders. Peach pleasure. I had fleas in my house. Don't judge me. You know how I got fleas? I have a friend who has an animal rescue and I foster animals sometimes for Like I can't keep one because I travel too much. Oh, thank you. I do my, what I can, but I can only keep them for a short time. So it's always kind of rotating weird dog of the month, you know? And, <laughs> and she always brings me the same kind of dog. It's always that, like, that dog that kind of looks like it was the thing in the never ending story with the floppy ears and <laughs> elongated body, white kind of patchy fur and kind of a buggy eyes and it, that sideways overbite that... <laughs> He is precious. I don't know why you can't find him a home. <laughs> he bit me, but he doesn't bite down all the way. When he bites, he just goes. <laughs> His fucking crazy bug eyes look up to space like he's expecting alien messages. Like, kill him? Yes, I should. <laughs> Until he gets tired of having my hand in his mouth and he backs it out with his tongue. Oh. <laughs> I got fleas from him. We always had to leave the door open, like when the dogs were in the house, like you have to leave the door open and stuff, and you get those bugs. I don't even know what they're called. Anytime there's stagnant air and you leave a window or a door open, they just kind of fly at about eye level in the middle of a room and don't fucking do anything. They just, you, what do they do, these bugs? They just run back and forth. It's like they got ADD. Oh, I forgot my bag. I forgot my bag. I don't have a bag. I'm a bug. Never mind. Never mind. You guys want to go out or what? I'm like, make up your mind. Pizza or fish? I don't know. Ants are on the ground going, get a job. <laughs> well, you know, because like ants, I, I had ants in my bathroom, like big long line of huge, like all the way across the room. And I'm like, I don't know anybody that doesn't have that big existential moment when you look at ants. Like you feel like God and you're like, wow. Look at them, man. They just, you know, have like little jobs and they build these little tunnels and they take their kids to school and they teach them stuff telepathically and have these little, they bring things back. They just want a place to live, you know? But not here. We're going to rebuild. No, you're not, because every three weeks, a can of tornado. Here it comes. <laughs> I know I'm mad with power. I get over it. I even know how I became mad with power. I played paintball and I went bananas, and now I have an enormous psychotic ego. You guys ever played paintball? <laughs> Woo! -hoo! If you haven't, let me educate you. Um, I hate guns. I've always hated guns, but uh, after playing paintball for 10 minutes, I was like, I don't even need my dick anymore. This is, it is so much fun. It is, you will lose your mind. 
and the, and the, you know, the game is, you know, it's like capture the flag and you're just shooting at each other or whatever and you have these little rented guns or whatever and there's always paint in the barrel and then when you try to shoot somebody, the, the balls go pew, 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 Like, what the fuck? Why can't I shoot you? It's like you have a force field. When did you join the X-Men? How is that possible? And meanwhile, there's always some asshole on the other team who has his own fucking gun. Like this big shiny silver thing called the Viper 3000 or something with a big silver tube running to it and two enormous tanks of bullets on his back, you know, and like he's preparing for the apocalypse of paint, you know, and, and, and it like you could do a house in an afternoon with it. It's like, and I'm over here. What kind of fucked up priorities is that? The dude's like gun costs $2,200. I know for a fact his rent was 600 a month. That's... I know I'm jealous, I know. I was, we were playing on a place called Fields of Fury, because that's how stupid you get. You actually think that's cool. And I, wa I walk out from behind this tree, and I'm just like having so much fun, and I look up, and that motherfucker is staring right at me. Like private pile and full metal jacket, just. How's it going, Joker? <laughs> and he let loose on me like you would, like just. <laughs> like this big fluorescent psychedelic orgasm of Pella's, just greens and yellows, just. <laughs> and I've lost my mind so much that I think I'm in a John Woo film, so I dive backwards firing like that's fucking gonna work. And I go. <laughs> By the way, that hurts really bad when it's not in slow motion, for the record. <laughs> but I dive backwards and I'm shooting like that and he just lets loose, just <laughs> But there were bushes between us. And unlike real bullets, paint pellets, they break up a little bit if they hit stuff. And you have to have a spot on you the size of a quarter to die. So I'm laying there on the ground in between me and this psychotic asshole. And I think I'm alive. <laughs> and he, you know, uh, convinced of his own superiority, moves on to kill one of my friends. And he just marches on. And I'm laying there on the ground going, I'm alive. I'm like reborn, I'm moving like a baby. I'm like, I'm alive. But you have to get a paint check to see for sure, which means you have to call for a referee. And by referee, I mean a 15 year old in a helmet eating a breakfast burrito who should be working at a skating rink. Is the only thing between you and death. And uh, so you have to lay there and call for a paint check. So I'm laying on the ground, totally rigid, frightened out of my guts. And like, there's all these like half broken pellets sitting on my chest and I don't want them to spill or anything. I'm going, paint check, paint check, paint check. Cause I don't want them to come back and finish the fucking job. I don't want them to hear me. You know, I'm using the dog frequency like. <laughs> hoping one of these fucking kids goes. <laughs> Finally, one of them. <laughs> He hears me, he comes over, he goes, game off. Ugh, paint check. Yeah, you're all right. Game on, safe, it's good. And I got up off the ground and the rage that poured through me, curled my body like Gollum. I was like, we hate this. We must kill this. And I hunted this fucker down. I was seriously going, I was going through the forest like. Ooh, you're my friend. Be very, very quiet. And I got right up behind this guy. He was crouched down near the, the place where my team had its flag and he was just waiting to shoot like anybody who came near. Dickhead. And I got right up behind him and put my gun right up to the back of his helmet. Now there's a rule where you have to allow them a chance to surrender. You say surrender and they can walk off the field without being shot. Fuck that. I assassinated this bastard. I was like. <laughs> Bitch! 
his neck was all bruised, his helmet's green. Pissed. Walked off the field, and you'd think that'd be the end of it. But unfortunately, we, we had played 10 games that day. We had time for one more to break the tie. Yeah, and every time we had played that, like this field that they put us on, they had, their flag was on this thing and they had a piece of plywood right here. And there's like crashed F-16s on this field. It's nutty, like turned over buses. You just really feel like you're in Splinter Cell. It's a, a nerd's wet dream, really. Green and orange and fuchsia wet dream, but still. And every time we played on this field, they would park that fucker right here behind their flag. And he would just eat Cheetos and play Game Boy until any of my friends came near and then he would just stand up and Earl shibe us, you know. I will paint your friend for just $99.95. <laughs> and you just walk off like bruised and bloody, you know. But we were got there, we've been playing this game, but we got down to the last two minutes and the ref gave us a two minute warning and I'm this far from the flag and I have eight bullets left in my breast pocket and I'm stuffing them into my gun like I'm at the end of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Kissing every one of them, just, whoa. <laughs> just losing my mind. My, I have two friends left. They have four bullets each. That's it. And fucker, that guy. Mm. But we gotta go. We have now. I have a minute and forty-five seconds, and I have to get the flag and get it all the way back to my side to win. I have to go, and I have more bullets, so it's my turn, right? So I just this is what an asshole paintball made me. I actually stood up and went, cover me. Yeah. Stupid. And I'm making hand signals that I learned in Predator and I don't even know what they mean. <laughs> I gotta go, a minute, 30 seconds, and I gotta grab it and I gotta get all the way back. Fuck, what am I gonna do? Oh, shit, I'm gonna get shot. I gotta go, a minute, 20 seconds, I gotta go, man. So I, I, I actually do this. Right here, I landed right up next to it doesn't even know that and there it is and I'm this close to it I got a minute and 10 seconds and I have to get it and go 150 yards that way I gotta go man so I grab it and I clutch it to my chest and it is soaking wet the second it touches me I'm sweating so profusely it's scared to death and I get up because I have no choice and I start running stand up <laughs> click nothing I'm running my ass off my heart and my throat <laughs> expecting to feel the antiseptic sting of 16,000 pain pellets in the small of my back at any second and I'm running my ass off oh my god and I get all the way back to my side and I have a flag in my hand and I throw it on the ground I'm like yes we won! Fuck yeah! Right on, man! We won! Yes! Bitches, that's right! And that's when I realized that everyone on the other team had been dead for 20 minutes. <laughs> and they had been sitting on a hill watching us play with ourselves. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, San Francisco. Thank you, Cobbs, for being so good to me. Oh, man. Bless you, thanks very much. Have a good night. Thanks very much. But I also um, do a lot of uh, private shows in between my sets. I'll go and do private jokes in between stuff. It's where you take uh, one of the patrons into a small room and you give them a private show for a little bit and then they tip you and it's like, you know, 20% uh, uh, for normal jokes, kind of middle of the road stuff, $60 for, you know, kind of specialty jokes and, and 80 bucks for dirty humor, you know, and then anything they tip over that kind of makes it extra good. So anyways, yeah. I keep everything here matches my shoes because there's nothing worse than being on stage middle of your show and wondering is the cable wrapped completely around uh, my hair dryer so it's not so that's there and I've got, of course I've got all my batteries and I'm charging for
wish I was doing some sort of pre-show thing that shows how I kind of get to being ready to be on stage, but uh, I feel kind of like an asshole if I do something like that, because it's really just my job, you know? So I shouldn't really have to work up to it. It's kind of like a plumber going, all right, this place got pipes. Okay, I'm ready. I got a wrench. Where's my wrench? My wrench. Okay. Let's do the wrench action before we go and fix the pipes. It's dumb. So I'm just going to go do my show and hope that's enough. But there's something you have to do before every show. And now uh, you can't see it. when you come out to like big driving music, man. It's just, I, I, uh, I apologize for the big egomaniacal entrance, uh, but, but I have one of the few jobs where you can actually do that, so I'm going to do it, by God. I, you know, I get, you know, I get to pick my theme music, you know, in my life. That's, you know how awesome that is? That's brilliant, because you don't get to. Most of us don't in our own life, you know what I mean? Other people pick your theme music for you when you walk into a room, you know? And you hope it's good, you know? You hope when you walk into a room, they go, wow, she's hot. You know? And not, you know, it's a circus in town. You know what I mean? Or, you know, I get that. I used, I'm from Kentucky and that's what I used to get. You know what, if I, if I could pick one song for my whole life that would be my theme song. It would be that song, I don't even know the name of it. It's in all those period horseback riding movies where there's a guy riding, you know, in a kilt or something on the back of a horse, just into battle going, You know that song? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> that is, I think, seriously, that is the single greatest song in the history of the world. It just gives you, there's so much power in it, you know? That's the song you want playing in your iPod the day you decide to go postal, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> fuck this job. Does Dave still work here? He me hold on, want me who, you know? You know what I mean? It's like, ooh, it's so invigorating. <laughs> The only other time you see that song is in a, in a movie where there's a priest being torn apart by Rottweilers in a park. You know, it, the, the weird thing is, have you ever seen more than one Rottweiler in your whole fucking life? No. And suddenly there's six of them running through the park, no leash, no owner, just hit me, hoop, 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 hoop. You know, just haunches, rippling muscle, just saliva flying. Hit me, hoop, hoop, hoop. You know, and he, he never sees it coming. He, no one believes me that that child is the devil. <laughs> it is, it's like, the, it is the single great, I don't even know what the fuck it's about. It's amazing though, you know? And there's like 16,000 people singing it. I'm convinced that a lot of them didn't know the words either, any more than I do, you know what I mean?